This is Crick Buzz Chatter with Adam Collins and Michael Vaughan at the end of the second day of the third and deciding test match between England and the West Indies. Both sides took six wickets today and the West Indies are in a lot of trouble, uh, six down for 137 at the close. But Vaughan, what an opportunity they had at the start of play. They took four for 18 in the first half an hour and out walks Stuart Broad. Yeah, absolutely. They were running through the England batting lineup with uh, some terrific bowling. Shannon Gabriel, if he kept his foot behind the line, he was getting a wicket every other ball. And Kemar Roach just got the lens right, got a bit of movement. Uh, they were holding the chances. And then all of a sudden, Stuart Broad arrived and played like Gary Sobers for about an hour and 20 minutes. It was wonderful striking. Uh, the West Indies has lost the way, hit them off the length. Uh, only three balls from the seamers would have gone on to hit the stumps of Stuart Broad. They were bowling short, they were bowling wide, they were going for York is not getting it right. The short balls weren't high enough. They were chest high. He put one into the uh, stand just down below us. Uh, he can do that to teams, but I was surprised that the West Indies didn't just take a backward step and go, right, OK, he's coming. He swung a few to the boundary. Either go wide of off stump or just keep it simple, simple and try and hit off stump as many times as possible. Uh, with Don Best, they just changed the momentum of the whole of that morning session and you just felt that glimmer of hope that the West Indies had with those four quick wickets. It was just kind of put, pushed to one side because of that Stuart Broad uh, smashing to the boundaries. It was the third fastest half century for an England test player. They've been playing test cricket for 145 years. It's remarkable to think how he went about it today. 50 brought up in just 33 balls, eventually out for 62. Kemar Roach though, we shouldn't brush over the fact that he picked up his 200th test wicket in that spell at the start when they gave themselves that big opportunity. I mean, I mean, what a bowler he's been over a 12-year period, taken 200 test wickets at an average of 27. Yeah, he's high class. I mean, the angle that he creates from wide of the crease, just nipping them back into the right hand and then taking the odd ball away. Uh, skillful, bowls a terrific length, hates going for runs. I love that in a bowler. Uh, I, I just hope he plays for a few more years and he gets to that 300 mark. He's, he's the kind of bowler that I look at as an ex-England captain and, and as an ex-captain, think, oh, I'd love him in my team because, you know, you're throwing the ball and he runs in for you all day with a huge amount of skill. So delighted to see that he got his 200. So I just wonder if he can get to that 300 mark in the next few years. So England make it to 369 after all that this morning. West Indies walk out after lunch and it's starting to rain here now as you can probably see through the screen. I mean the way that got cloudy there didn't it Vaughan? And if it gets cloudy in England, Broad, Anderson in the 11 for the first time across the series they went to work. Well they've played together in Test Cricket 117 Test matches so they, they know each other's games and in those Test matches I think they've got 887 wickets so you could say in these conditions you know, with the Duke ball in Manchester, a little bit in the pitch. It's probably the hardest pair that you could probably pace in uh, world cricket. And, and when they get the, the, the kind of combination going, backed up by Joffrey Archer and Chris Wokes, very, very difficult to try and amass something near that score that England got. So it didn't surprise me that the West Indies uh, lost wickets at regular intervals. Uh, there was a bit of resistance, particularly from Jason Holder at the end there. But uh, when Anderson and Broad are together in these conditions, you only have to look a year ago when they weren't together. Broad on his own made it quite difficult for the Australians, barring Steve Smith and Marnus Labuschagne. In England, when the Duke ball's swinging and nipping around, it's a, a very difficult place to bat, particularly when you've got an inexperienced batting line like the West Indies. So three wickets in the middle session and three wickets in the final session there. 33 runs away from the follow-on mark. Would you believe, after all that hard work in the first hour, they're in dire straits, in no small part due to Joffrey Archer. Also back into the 11. The way he set up John Campbell, it was delicious. Full ball, full ball, full ball, then a vicious bouncer. Yeah, straight at him. He has a funny technique. Like He likes to come out of his crease plays nicely on the front foot but if you notice where he played that back foot steepler from Joffrey Archer again it's from the crease line there's an opening batsman facing 90 miles an hour you've got to give yourself that extra yard and a half of time so go back in your crease uh, expect that someone like Joffrey is going to challenge you with the odd short ball it was too quick too steep brilliant bowling from Joffrey Archer and I thought the whole bowling unit from an England perspective today was right on it they bowled for dots they bowled for discipline and they just knew that they just kept on chipping away chipping away knowing that the wickets were going to fall so it was a real team collective bowling unit and England in the last two test matches I have to say they've played proper test match cricket very disciplined with the bat you know they've had a, a few little collapses but I felt overall they've played the, the, the test match way which is bat with hard discipline make it difficult for the opposing team to bowl you out and when you get the ball in hand bowl for maidens bowl for dots and everything else will follow on that point of England's bowling let's go into the hot spot
Warney in the hot spot. It was said on television today by Nasser Hussain that he, he thinks this might be the best quartet that could ever be assembled for England in terms of pace bowling at one venue as far as the conditions today and so on. Anderson brought all their experience. Joffre Archer's extreme pace and then Wokes who had middle stump cartwheeling towards the end of the day, the six wicket to fall in the afternoon. Uh, is that how you see it as well? You can't get it much better than this at the moment. No, I think he's probably spot on. I mean, you only have to look at the amount of wickets that combination has got, particularly Broad and Anderson uh, with the Duke ball in these conditions, clouds around. That's why I said it's so difficult for the West Indies to get anywhere near a total that would put England under pressure when you've got... You know, the most experienced pair playing together, they don't give anything away. They're not going to give you freebies on your pads. You're not going to get short, wide balls. You're pre pretty much going to play maiden after maiden with the scoreboard not ticking, with the ball moving around. You try and take the drive on, it's probably going to be an outside edge. You try and challenge them with something. They've got all the experience to try and say, you can't do anything to really put us off our lens. So, yeah, as a quartet, uh, I think Archer and Chris Wokes have still got a little bit of a way to go to get to near that combination. But as four bowlers, I mean, I had a, a nice attack in 2005. I certainly will ever talk those four down that I was lucky to captain. But uh, I don't think uh, Nasser's too far off the mark of what he said. And pressing fast forward, Vaughan, the bounce back ability of this West Indies side we've talked about throughout the series, and they showed it this morning to their credit. But when Broad went nuts, they just had they just couldn't find it. And then, of course, that was reflected in their batting. Have they finally hit the wall? Has it taken to this part of the series to completely lose what they had earlier on? Yeah, I think they'll fight. They're, they're always going to do that under a Jason Holder team, but. Um you know, I just look at the two teams on paper. We've got to be honest, England are a better test match team in these conditions. What I look at is how England lost a test match. You know, they lost the first test match because they didn't bat well enough, didn't play with enough discipline. Since that, it was, again, a wake-up call. I don't know how many wake-up calls the test match team here in England need to have, but it seems to be at the start of every series, they need to go 1-0 down to suddenly press them into playing the proper test match way. Uh, I give them a target. Try and start against Pakistan like they've finished against the West Indies. It's, uh, it's quite nice to go 1-0 up in a series rather than come from 1-0 behind. But uh, England are a better test match team at this stage than the West Indies. The West Indies are growing. They're in transition. There's a lot of promising signs. So you can see them over the next two or three years become a, a better test match team. But uh, nothing has surprised me with, uh, with the result over the course of the last two weeks. Yeah, the good news is the forecast looks OK for tomorrow. It may rain later in the test match. But whether England choose to enforce a follow-on if they get the opportunity, that will probably be resolved early tomorrow if they get a bit of a run on of course follow it all on the Crick Buzz live blog and then it stumps on Crick Buzz chatter with Adam Collins and Michael Vaughan.